So today I'm joined by social media influencer uh, and presenter and uh, Bristol City fan, uh, Mikey Coburn. So Mikey, first of all, thanks for joining me today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. No, it's really good to sit down with another City fan and talk about the lows of being a City fan. So <laughs> yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? You've been all right? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. Thanks. Um, but yeah, let's go straight into it and talk a, bit, a little bit about your career. So when did it first sort of kick off uh, with, I think you kicked off with uh, music and stuff like that. I think I'm right saying that, but how did it all kick off for you? Yeah, that's exactly how it happened. So I was uh, back in the day in Bristol and I was in Bristol. I, I was going to college at St. Brendan's and um, basically joined this little, <laughs> I was in a boy band. Right? It's never, I know the people watching this might be boy band fans, but <laughs> um, yeah, I was in a boy band and then ended up uh, going into another boy band and um, just kind of worked really hard every day. We did a lot of content on YouTube and social media in general, just every day we were uploading and trying to get like as big as possible and it, it it was very very hard and we sacrificed a lot but we got there in the end and became quite successful and then when we were successful I thought actually this is pretty rubbish and I left <laughs> so um so ever since I've been doing as you said social media stuff um uh Instagram and all that jazz presenting I've been I've been really lucky to have some awesome presenting opportunities I'm sure you will because I've never met someone of your age be so confident in presenting and interviewing so thanks go on, you're gonna kill it you're gonna do really well thank you for that um so uh, as you said a few of the stuff you have done for like social media and presenting is uh, you've actually got to work for your uh, boyhood club you've been doing been doing a few things with Bristol City uh, how, how did that all kick off how did you get those opportunities um, do you know what? It, it's it's weird because it's going back. Oh, it's going back a while now. It was before I left the band. So um, we made all our members of the band made our own social media accounts because oh, we had a bit of a bad manager, <laughs> right? Um, and we weren't allowed to have our own social media accounts, but we did it anyway in the end. And they obviously started gaining momentum. And back in the day on Instagram, if you went on a live stream, it would notify all your followers that you were watching a live stream so i went on this bristol city one we were playing blackburn away and it was a day that um pisano scored in like the 80th yeah, minute I remember that one. you remember that great day that wasn't it yeah um and they, the players were warming up and i just commented saying um oh come on boys or something like that and left the live stream next thing you know there was like three thousand road trip fans road trip was the name of the boy band it was about three thousand of them just saying mikey 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 um, and Bristol City replied, like, who is Mikey? What is Road Trip? Anyway, they ended up following me, which, and I lost my mind. Like, by this point, I've, I've met a lot of YouTubers and celebrities and stuff like that. I've never been starstruck. Like, um, lived with Jake Paul for like a week when we were out in America. And that had nothing on the moment I saw that notification come through. Crazy. Bristol City. I went nuts. Um, so that happened. And then just got chatting to him and they invited me. And one of the other band members to a game and then um after i left the band they were like i think i think it was an instagram takeover they wanted me to do an instagram match day takeover for brentford away um and uh for me it was just a dream come true it was weird because everyone watching all the city for you know what it's like being a football fan there's a lot of um lads who are like 18 19 maybe even 20 who are you know showing off a bit and write write some stuff that isn't necessarily the nicest but i absolutely found it hilarious that to me <laughs> it was just such good banter um and I just had an opportunity of a of a lifetime and then they asked me to do the Bristol City podcast with Downsy yeah um which was amazing but then Covid came about and absolutely butchered that but uh yeah it was good I've been I've done work with Scotty Murray who's the biggest legend in the world um yeah Corey Smith before he left and um and uh John Lansdowne as well so yeah, I've been I've been really really blessed to to do work with the club that I love. So yeah, I believe those were all with the the Robin's Nest podcast, wasn't it? How was it like uh, filming all of those? I think sadly you only did the first two, obviously before COVID hit. But how were those two like? Yeah, it was good because I live in London, so I used to travel down. Um, also, just got to put it out there. Was, I think a lot of City fans thought that I was kind of getting paid by the club and getting a lot of money to do it. I didn't. It was completely, you know, I, I just loved it and did it completely for free. So I used to travel down to Bristol um, and do it. And I loved it. Like the first one we did was Corey Smith. Um, and I hadn't met Corey before. So I turned up, my mum dropped me off at the city ground 
Um, this just goes to show how unglamorous my life actually is. Um, <laughs> my mum dropped me off the city ground and um, I could see Corey walking around outside the sports bar. And I was like, all right, cool. This is cool. It's just great. I went up to him and I was like, oh, you're right, mate. Yeah, obviously, by this point in year, it was going to be me and Downsy. And he was the nicest guy. Nicest guy. Got in the club shop because that's where we filmed the first one. And it was me, Downsy, Scotty Murray and Corey Smith. And um, Scotty was my hero growing up. Like when I was young, I remember the first game I went to, I met Scotty before the game and he ruffled my hair and signed the programme. Um, so he's always been my favourite player. So for me, it's weird because I still, whenever it's about football, Bristol City, I'm still like a 10 year old inside. It still excites me so much. Um, so I just couldn't quite believe it. I couldn't quite believe that I was doing it. And then the second one was in the players lounge, which was weird because I was like, what am I doing here? I was like this slightly overweight 24 year old. <laughs> <laughs> I always dreamed of being there, but I never quite. Um, and yeah, it was me, Scotty Murray, Downsy and John Lansdowne. And it was very interesting just hearing how the dynamic of the club works and the behind the scenes stuff. And then um, a couple of weeks later, I ended up getting COVID and uh, wasn't able to record any or travel to Bristol because of isolation, really. But yeah, brilliant, brilliant experience. One one that I'll be able to tell my kids one day with future, two future City fans or three, however many I have. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned there Scott Morris a hero. Then how was it like uh, sharing a picture with him uh, when you played at Ashton Gate? Oh, uh, you know what? I'm so happy you asked that because it was sick. I, I remember thinking because I I spent a lot of the time on the bench. Um, so I played twice: once on the Friday and once on the Sunday. And um, the Friday we were against each other no sorry friday we were on the same team um and uh, i came on and i was playing in defense and then they put me up front like on the left wing which is my preferred position anyway I play there on sundays um so i was playing with scotty who was playing at, like center attack in mid and um i ended up scoring which best moment of my life like absolute best moment of my life and then um i just remember thinking i was looking up at my mum because my mum's been there for me through thick and thin and she knows how much i used to love well used to how much I do love City and how much I did growing up so um I just remember thinking she knows how much this means to me and so did my girlfriend um and then Scotty there was one moment where Scotty played this corner in right it was a beautiful ball and I hit this volley and I promise you it was sweet as a nut if it was either side of the keeper that was getting, hitting the bar and going in but he touched it over and I was fuming because I could have had an assist from Scotty Murray um but yeah mate it was just surreal absolutely loved it it was it was a dream come true I, I honestly hope for, for you and any City fans um, that you get the opportunity to play at Ashton Kate one day yeah a lot of people watching obviously this video out there uh, probably does want to uh, grow up to be a, a professional footballer so how was it like obviously uh, getting to Ashton Gate getting changed going out uh, of the tunnel and then, and then obviously playing the, the the moment you did at Ashton Gate um, it was just I mean uh, it's pretty much exactly how you imagine it to be um, so I turned up again, my mum dropped me off and I went with um, my girlfriend and my mum. They were basically, they went to the bar and kind of waited for everyone to come out. Um, so, yeah, I just, I turned up and in my head, I was like, listen, even though I'm around these people, I was around celebrities and stuff like that. But I was like, I don't care if I come across <laughs> as being a, a fan of this moment. I was like, I, I'll, I'll meet them another time. You know, I didn't, didn't care about being professional. I just walked in and I was like, oh. and <laughs> as you walk in, you walk down this tunnel um to get to to get to the changing yeah. rooms about 30 feet maybe 20 30 feet and I was just looking around and I was on my own in there looking at these these pictures on the wall I mean they had pictures from um um City uh, away at Man City in the cup they had the Corey Smith moment they had like Dan Bentley and all these players on the wall and I was just like well what am I doing in here um changing rooms were stunning I was in the away one first and then the home one on the second game um the home one is they're pretty much the same but the home one has uh pictures coming down of the play like three of three different pictures in the middle of the changing rooms of the players um and uh yeah i just remember thinking i cannot believe it when i was in the away one i was thinking i wonder who sat because i had my own allocated spot i was thinking i wonder who sat here was it zlatan <laughs> or did rooney sit here for yeah Derby? it was just weird like i couldn't couldn't quite believe it but for me it was going out on the pitch for the first time um like, uh, <laughs> hope that you never see this because when I was younger, I was I was involved in a few pitch invasions. I think, <laughs> I think we've all been there <laughs> from the East End back in the day. Um, but yeah, no, I just I, it was my first proper legal <laughs> experience of going on the pitch. 
so <laughs> so i was like this is this is crazy nobody's trying to kick me out um i couldn't quite believe it it was just a dream yeah i'll make sure to overlay some of the videos i took when i was behind the scenes ashton gate over what you were just talking about because it is it's absolutely amazing oh it's were you, were you there that day no i wasn't but um uh when was it october i think uh we went on a tour of ashton gate we got to go uh, all all around the, the players lounge like you said earlier and the, the timeline and stuff so i'll make sure to put some of those videos uh overlaying what you just said because it, it is absolutely amazing walking down the tunnel and then obviously oh. turning left and then seeing the pitch for the first time is absolutely amazing oh it's beautiful isn't it there's no better feeling honestly yeah. it was uh, the, the little boy in me that went to this you know so many times over the years um it was just brilliant loved every every single second yeah, so as, as well as obviously getting these amazing opportunities with Bristol City, you're obviously also a diehard City fan. So what have been some of your uh, favourite memories of, of following City down the years? Oh, do you know what? My, my standout one, I mean, I, I think most people would say United when they're playing United in the Cup. Yeah, I think, I think that's got to be my one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it was a brilliant day, but the, it, I was gutted because I wasn't there that day. I'll tell you about that oh. in a minute. But um, for me... When I was 17, we played Rovers in the Johnson's Paint Trophy. I think it's called the Papa John's Trophy now. Mm. Um, so we played them at Ashton Gate and uh, Jet. Don't know if you remember Jet. Yeah, Jay Manuel uh, Thomas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, him. Yeah, scored this goal. Yeah, he was, oh, mate, legend. Met him. He was at the, yeah, the charity game. He's a proper nice guy. Um, but he scored and we were 1 0 up at half time. And the place was just electric in the old wedlock as well, a uh, little East End. It was just electric, but at half time, I didn't realize I, I'd become so dehydrated because I've been celebrating and singing and jumping about so much. I nearly passed out um, and uh, I didn't have any money either. I'm not, I'm not from a well-off background. This before I ever had a career or anything like that. So I, had, I think I had about two pound on me. I just managed to salvage from somewhere. I managed to get myself a Powerade and stay alive. But um, yeah, that night, I mean, the moment, uh, Joe Bryan when it scored the winner the minute yeah. that goal went in it's just oh brilliant and the banter with the Rovers fans it was so that one for me um and then there's Rotherham at home in 2007 when um, we got promoted David Noble just went on a madness and scored well he scored <laughs> twice that day he, he was brilliant yeah so many good memories over the years I mean there's the playoffs as well and then you know you compare that to some of the bad memories <laughs> yeah I'd do anything for that that's one of the that's the yeah. Bristol City Rovers is probably one of the games that is on my bucket list to go to during my lifetime. So hopefully, um, uh, the gas can be bothered to get promoted a few times over the next few years uh, to, to get back oh, up to. I don't to think they will. No. I don't think they will. To be honest, the only yeah. chance will be probably <laughs> FA Cup or we've got a chance maybe Carabao Cup this year if we we both get past round one. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, definitely. Um, but you've got another another charity game coming up. Uh, well, you'll be putting on your boots, and uh, that's the Clash of Creators. You're obviously uh, you. Were, I believe you're one of the first to actually uh, be uh, confirmed to be playing in that. And then after that, uh, I'm not sure if if you knew about this um, when you were announced, but you're going to be playing against some of the biggest creators in Britain, in the likes of Rotashaw, Theo Baker, uh, Spencer Owen, and many others. So how uh, how did that all come around, and uh, how much are you looking forward to it? Yeah, it was. Um... I can't remember how it came around now. I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, I love my main passion in the world is football. Like I'll play at any level, obviously not at the top. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll play it, I'll play any game I possibly can. Um, and I think it so the organizers, there's two organizers, a guy called Callum and then uh, Tom Sharman. And they're both really lovely guys. And I think Tom reached out to me about it. And I was like, yeah, absolutely all day. Um, never, you know, I knew I knew that they wanted to do something where it was like small creators versus like massive creators um but i didn't realize the scale of which they were gonna execute it so they've done a great job um but the thing is i mean i i never get intimidated by by youtubers or mm. anyone like that and i always think um regardless of because realistically and everyone watching this is one key lesson social media and all the numbers and all that it means nothing um so i, I was just excited to go along to be honest and just play football um against people who, I don't know, I mean, might be good, might not be good, and just to have a laugh with it, really. Um, like I said, I just love playing football. It's my one passion in the world. So I've got a new pair of boots. They're not here, actually. I got a lucky pair of boots a few weeks back. Um, 
played five, scored five so far. So including the Ashton Gate Good goal. Record. So, oh, yeah. you've got to keep them then. You've got, you've got to keep oh, absolutely. Them. Yeah. So I'm hoping, hoping to get a couple more. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be good. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to hopefully meeting people again. Obviously, it's been so long since I've met any. I was supposed to have tours all this year and last year, and they've all been cancelled. So I'm hoping that people will be able to come along, and it's just going to be a great day. I can't wait. Yeah, and I said you're facing all these big creators, but you're also um, on a team with a few of them as well along yourself. You've got Chris MD, uh, as well as obviously Thogden and Thogdad as well. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, so Thogdad, I know, I know well. I know, I know those guys well. I've not, uh, like we were saying before um, about Thogden before we started filming, he's a legend, and so so is his dad. They're the nicest guys. Um, so I'm looking forward to being on a team with Thogdad. He's got a bullet head on him as well. Yeah, make um, us put, put a cross on his head. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he loves it, doesn't he? Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking forward to it. I think we've got a decent team, you know. We've got a decent team. Um, Chris MD, I mean, everyone's yeah. seen Chris's videos. And he just seems to be a baller, doesn't he? I'm hoping yeah. he'll turn it on in a big game, though. I think, uh, <laughs> yeah. some, players, some players crack under pressure, you know what I mean? But I, I don't think he'll be one of them. Um, yeah, I'm hoping we do all right. I'm just I'm a bit nervous about myself, though. I'm probably going to be... <laughs> Other than, other than Thogden, I'll be one of the uh, Thogdad. I'll be one of the oldest on the team, so I'm gonna have to. And I'm playing left wing as well, so I'm gonna be knackered. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be really good fun, really good fun, and uh, for charity as well. So it's gonna be a great day. Yeah, I'll make sure to put a link if if there are any tickets available. Still, I think there might be. I'll put a link in the description if you do want to go along to that. Um, but another amazing opportunity you've had in in recent weeks, and we were talking off air about the Euros. Um, you managed to to get a ticket for England Germany, didn't you? How was that? Oh, it was best game I've ever been to in my life. Um, it, it was just an unbelievable atmosphere. Like, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to, right? It was all football fans. So there wasn't like, um, it wasn't like tourists and there wasn't like families and stuff like that. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but it was the first game I've ever been to where it was just pure football fans yeah. everywhere. Um, and, you know, everybody was singing, everybody was stood up. It was just one of the best atmospheres i mean not even one of them it was unbelievable um going into it i was just terrified because i was like this germany like we're not going to win yeah you know, first i was time thinking we beat the same germany. thing yeah i wasn't very confident like, just... exactly but the thing is now i genuinely think it's coming home because we beat in germany the curse seems to be broken i genuinely think we can do it now um so yeah it was just beautiful beautiful day um the moment Raheem scored I yeah. was I, th I think everyone lost it I I I'm still struggling with asthma so I'm an asthmatic I'm usually all right but ever since Tuesday I've been really <laughs> struggling really struggling because the amount that I was screaming and jumping up and down um but yeah just a brilliant day all round. like when I went with my mate who's a Villa fan and uh obviously Jack Grealish came on and he was he was loving his life money when he came on the pitch um yeah just a real moment as well my phone i don't know if you saw this but i was on uh, i got captured on the telly yeah bbc um, <laughs> but my I, I, I never on thought screen like, now i thought it, I thought it looks oh, like legend. Talking yeah about. so i i never expected it, it to go off the way it did because usually you see you see fans on the telly and you never think of them for a second um and the signal was so bad at wembley that i i didn't you know know what was going on so it wasn't until after the game and I got out and I finally got internet that all these messages came through I genuinely overall I had easily over a thousand across social media and I just couldn't believe it I had people hit me up from school from like 10 years ago it was it was it was crazy um so I've just finished replying to them all today um <laughs> but yeah I, I mean I, that part of it I don't really care about for me it was just purely winning the game and now I mean we've got the easiest route we'll ever get to a final um which I have tickets for as well I'm buzzing I've got a ticket for the semi and the final that's crazy. if England make it I was just oh, I was just about to say um uh, have you got any plans for for the rest of the tournament yeah well you know what the, the gutting thing is for me on the day of the final um so I host a television show uh for kids and then on the day of the final I have to well it's not gutted so so if they watch this <laughs> i'm really sorry you're all legends joe i love you um <laughs> but, but i um yeah you know the day of the final i want to be at wembley early i want to get on it start having a laugh with the boys a couple of beers um but in the morning i'm going to be presenting and then uh, by midday i'll be finished so i should be at wembley for around two o'clock 
So hopefully, if England aren't there, then it's completely different. But if we are there, then it's just going to be unbelievable. And uh, the semi next week. To be honest, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm so nervous for them both. But if we win, then it'll be brilliant. Yeah, that, that they, are, they are gold dust tickets. And if England do make it, that could be arguably one of England's best well, in in the history of England, could arguably one of the, apart from 1966, that final, if England do make it and go on to win it, that could be absolutely go down in history and just think uh, you, yeah. you could be there. Certainly from for our generation. I mean, <laughs> the previous four generations, really. I think <laughs> um, I've, I've been really lucky, really, really lucky, but we've still got a long way to go. We might not, we might not win it. Um, we might not even get to the final. So I'm trying to keep my head on, like, you know, on my shoulders and not get carried away with it because every year I've let myself get carried away yeah. has ended with me crying on Oxford Street so that's <laughs> last thing I want this year um but we'll just see what happens you know it's going to be brilliant what about you what are you doing for the for the rest of the tournament um I think uh, we might have some friends around for uh, one of the games uh not so sure, probably the final if England do get there but apart from that probably just um watching it with my dad on on the tv you know sadly won't be able to nice. make it down to london and get a ticket because as i said they're probably like gold dust now aren't they how did you get manage yeah. to get a ticket did you get them for 2020 or did you luck out on no one now? i've been you know what i've been completely lucky my mate i don't know how he does it right the guy that the villa fan that i was telling you about i have no idea how he does it he sources his tickets from nowhere um he just he just messaged me and he was like mikey answer your phone right now um basically had a call with him and he was like i've got semis and i've got final tickets take them or leave them they're going right now and i was like i, I need to get one of these it cost it cost me an arm and a leg um but it was one of those that i was like you know what in the future it's i don't want to say i missed england winning the euros just to save a bit of money so I was like, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So um, yeah, I've just been, I've just purely been, that's one thing, everyone watching, it's not what you know, it's who you know, I <laughs> promise you. Because <laughs> um, it could be one of the best days of my life. In fact, it could be the best day of my life. Or it could be the worst day of my life, but I'm, I'm willing to pay that money to risk it. <laughs> I think even if you, the chance to watch England a, a final of a major tour, I think that that's worth anything really, isn't it? Especially if Absolutely. you've got that, it's 50-50 chance of winning it 90 minutes away yeah. from lifting the trophy. Exactly. But it's still a big if. We might not if, get there. Yeah, I'm if. still kind of staying, yeah. staying calm about it. Don't want to get too... Uh, over the top and obviously Ukraine is it, it is a winnable game but obviously we've seen it with Iceland we've seen it with obviously the other games this tournament we don't want to get uh, too ahead of ourselves do we exactly that exactly that I'm not I'm not freaking out about it I'm just I'm having a quiet one actually for the for the Ukraine game yeah it's the first time I'm actually having a quiet one it's me I'm going home to Bristol so I'm playing at Western Supermare yeah on I've Sunday. seen that on Sunday yeah so uh yeah, yeah. So I'm going home to Bristol to watch it with my mum and my girlfriend. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun. It's it's a bit bit of a come down watching it that way compared to being at Wembley the other day to watch England Germany. But you know what? It's gonna be good as long as we win. I don't care how we do it mm -hmm. as long as we win. You have another chance to uh, get assisted by Scott Murray again on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, I do. Is Scotty playing? I didn't know yeah. Scotty was playing. Scott's playing. I, oh, I believe probably. I'll just check that now, but I do believe Scott is playing. Uh, brilliant Western. okay cool yeah i mean yeah i mean scotty's just a top guy one thing i'll say i mean i, I obviously don't know scotty the same as how other people know him but in, in the, all the times i've met him he's just been an absolute gentleman the whole time like he knew after i scored at ashen gate he knew what that meant to me um because he came up to me after the game and he was like what did he say he was like you're able to say you scored at ashton gate now blah 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 and it's like he's just an all-round top guy like i'm i'm just so excited to play jamie i know jamie o'hara is playing he used yeah. to play for spurs and, and wolves and pompey yeah lee lee trundle as well it's trying playing cool yeah. that, that, that's uh, exciting oh yeah she was weird. playing as well brilliant yeah, there you go playing. brilliant do you know what it's, it's weird to me though because i could genuinely meet any celebrity and it wouldn't phase me at all. I can meet you, Justin Bieber could walk in my room and be like, all right, mate, how you doing? The minute someone mentions an ex-Bristol City player of any kind, <laughs> I'm like, Lee Trundle? It's, <laughs> it's brilliant. I just love it. How was all of this uh, game uh, opportunities to play uh, with all these legends and at all these stadiums come around with uh, celebrity soccer? 
Um, I can't remember now, to be perfectly honest with you. I, it was So the first game was at Ashton Gate. I saw that they were doing an Ashton Gate game, and I think I probably reached out to them. Um, and they, they, they invited me into the game. I think that's what happened. But it was so long ago. Um, it was pre-COVID. So the game was supposed to be played last May. Yeah. Um, and I obviously got pushed back and back and back. So... Um, yeah, we got it done in the end, and uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm pretty sure I reached out to them. I probably sent them a message on Instagram, being like, "Hi, can I play?" <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't ask, you don't get, I guess. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. I was like, at the time, I was like, you know what? I'll be able to, I'll be able to help out in some way. I was like, because realistically, it's for a great cause, yeah. Um, and it was a lifetime dream for me as well. So I thought, you know what? Let's reach out. Hopefully sell some tickets and yeah, I think it worked out well for everyone. Because they Crazy. asked me back. <laughs> Imagine they didn't <laughs> ask me back. <laughs> Crazy how they so. just one message got you to basically a childhood dream. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's one thing I'll say to anyone watching, really. Like, I'm not saying this to you, right? Because I know you've got your GCSEs coming up and your parents will probably find me and kill me if I say this, but study your GCSEs. But one thing I say is that I didn't do very well at school or with anything like that and I, I've always been kind of outgoing and ambitious when it comes to to just testing the waters to see you know if I can do something and I've, I've... having confidence in yourself and just having fun with things um oh sorry can you hear me it said yeah yeah, yeah yeah you just went out for a little bit but yeah I'm back now sweet uh but yeah confidence is the one thing I'm I, I talk about this all the time to, especially to young lads because you're a young lad and I think it's so important to just like you already seem confident to me which is brilliant because I don't know how you do it at your age when I was Thanks. 13 I would have been hiding behind the bed honestly I would have been terrified so you're doing an awesome job um but yeah being confident it gets you so far and and just enjoying and savoring every opportunity as well because uh, the thing is right I'm going on a bit of a rant here so I am sorry the thing <laughs> is right a lot of these celebrities, not not at celebrity or anything, just generally, or a lot of these social media people, whoever they might be, um, they think so much of themselves. And I'm just like, what? Or they'll demand a huge fee for yeah. playing a game of football. I'm like, why? Why? Why are you? What are you gonna do with all that money? Just go have a laugh, have fun, score a goal. Like, ah, oh, I don't get it. So be confident and always be humble. Is one lesson that I give to anyone watching this. Yes, would that be your advice Sorry. to anyone not coming in anything, really? It would be, definitely. I mean, I've just gone on an absolute rant when you didn't <laughs> even ask me that. <laughs> no, don't worry. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Yeah, it's just so important to be confident and um, and just savour the, the things you have around you. That's one thing. And surround yourself with good people. But they'll, they'll unveil themselves to you as it goes on. Um, yeah, that's my one piece of advice because hopefully it'll be some young lads or young girls like you, you got like yourself. I'm not saying you're a girl, you know. <laughs> <laughs> some young people like yourself, um, watching. And hopefully, you know, I can help in some way because I think I've I've lived a very blessed life, and um, I'm sure you're going to go all the way. I'm sure you're going to do really well. Um, is it journalism you want to do? Uh, yeah, sort of like the the reporting journalism side of stuff. Yeah, definitely. you'd be honestly, you'd be really, really good at it. I've I've yes. never met someone of your age so confident and good at it i sound so patronizing i'm sorry i'm not being like <laughs> no problem. Or anything. but um yeah it's cool man it's cool yeah. it's cool that you got that dream cheers thanks uh and then one final thing before i let you go have you got anything well obviously covid hopefully uh nearing the end of it have you got anything coming up over the rest of this year or maybe 2022 um see it's always hard isn't it i'm gonna have to i've got my calendar back there <laughs> I'll have a little look in it. Um, I'm going on tour a couple of times. I was supposed to go on tour last year um, and this year. So I've got rescheduled tour dates coming up, um, which will be on my social media. But I'm going to be completely honest. If there's any football fans watching, it's probably not for you. I mean, it might be if you like boy bands, but I'm hosting. It's going to be a boy bands on it. Otherwise, don't come. Um, <laughs> um, a few charity matches, like you said, Clash of Creators and things like that. Um, a lot of filming i'm trying to i'm really trying to blow up on tiktok i say blow up not like become a massive tiktok or anything like that um <laughs> but i want to I, I really enjoy making content for tiktok so i'm posting a lot on there at the minute uh and youtube i'm trying to i'm trying to get all my social medias to around 100 oh sorry if that made a horrible noise i'm trying to get all my social medias to around 100k 
which is an awful lot. And I know it's a big ask, but with a bit, with hard work in a year, I should be able to do it. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So yeah, if you guys fancy it, go over to my YouTube channel. And obviously subscribe to Ben's YouTube channel. He's absolutely killing the game. Yes. But yeah, I'll, I'll put a link to obviously all of your stuff at the moment. But yeah, as you said, that, thanks for that. But you've also, um, you're also smashed it. Got down here, 178,000 on all uh, Twitter, Instagram, and um, YouTube. So just uh, what's it got to be about? Just over 100, 100k until you get that that goal. Hey, result. Cheers, mate. Oh, take that. I'm very happy with that. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, numbers mean uh, it literally means nothing um, at all. Like numbers, I, I I feel like a lot of people think once you get to a certain number, and myself included, because I think you always want to grow and grow and grow. Yeah. I think people think once you get to a certain number, you're happy and you're cool and you're famous and you're this and you're that. You're not. You're just a bloke <laughs> with a few more numbers on your phone. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it would be cool. And it's, I think it's good to work towards goals like that, but um, never get number obsessed ever with social media stuff because it, it means nothing. And it can go as quick as you as you gain it as well. I think that's a, that is a bit, a lot of content creators who fall into that trap, don't they, of always like waking up and first thing they do is uh, look, look at the numbers on their phone, if how many have they gained that night. And I think yeah. um, myself, Max, like you as well, we, 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 we've all been caught in that trap. Definitely, definitely. That's one, the one thing about social media. I mean, if we could go back in time, and this is one thing I'd love to do, is con conduct an experiment where you ask 100 people, if you could go back in time and eliminate social media, so it never happened. Would you do it? And I genuinely think, especially with people of my age, I think the majority of people would say yes, um, because it's only it's only added negativity into the world, in my opinion. So, yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? It's a weird world we yeah. live in now. It is, but I think I think if it keeps on going like this, it, it will be for the better. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining me today, uh, Mikey. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you. No, it's been mine. It's been all mine. It's been great to sit down and chat with you. It's nice to do something about football as well. Yeah. You'd be surprised how little I actually do about football because everyone's like, do you want to talk about boy bands? I'm like, yes, go on. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, but no, thanks, mate. And you absolutely smashed it, honestly. You're Thank you. Proper really good appreciate that. Uh, but no, yeah, th family. thank you all for watching again. Thanks for uh, Mikey for joining me today. Make sure to also check out all his stuff uh, down in the description below, as well as all the other stuff we've talked about, like Crash Clash of Creators, uh, Celebrity, all of that sort of stuff. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Come on, you Reds. <laughs>